being sober kicks ass. Says the psychedelics guy, right? Says the guy who microdosed for two years and who still takes psychedelics from time to time. Now, if you're a straight edge person who basically just has no place whatsoever for drugs, uh, then you probably just turn off this video right now and say, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're not even, you're not, I mean, you take, you take your, you just said you take psychedelics every now and then. So what, what are you talking about? Sobriety, blah, blah, blah. Don't you know drugs are bad? Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's your own perception of the world. As far as I'm concerned in my books, I'm referring to the day to day state of mind. And let's just put it out there. If you eat food, you're a druggie. So all of us pretty much watching this, unless you master the breatharian state, you're a druggie. But let's exclude that here. Let's exclude the breatharian argument. And let's refer to sober as the conventional way, the conventional definition of sobriety, which is, you know, you're... Your average drugs, alcohol, marijuana, psychedelics, cocaine, crack, etc., etc. Uh, and will include things like coffee, Adderall. So essentially, I am referring to your day-to-day -day state of mind. Excluding food, which is a drug, okay? But for the sake of this video, we're just going to pretend like we need food. Let's just roll with the mass consciousness and the, the current belief system, okay? But for you guys who've been following the Breatharian videos, you know very well that it, it's a drug. So, okay, let's just exclude that for now. So we're referring to anything other than food for sustenance uh, as a drug, okay? So things like coffee, anything you take to enhance your uh, your cognitive abilities, let's say. Things like, I don't know, alpha brain, uh, anything, you know, nootropics, anything like that, that is going to enhance your mental cognitive abilities, your physical abilities, testosterone shots, anything like that. Okay, let's just refer to that for the time being. And let's set another uh, guideline. Okay, hold on. Lucy! Lucy! <whistles> Lucy! Ah, I think she saw me. I think she saw me. She coming here? Ah, oh, no. <laughs> She's too far. So, what I was saying is... What was I saying? What was I saying? <laughs> Maybe I'm really drugged up right now. Who knows? Maybe I do need something for my mental cognitive abilities. So... We're referring to anything that you take to enhance your performance in the world. So, I microdosed for two years. And before that, I was, you know, drinking coffee every day. Oh, yeah, I was saying, let's set another foundation here for the, for the discussion, which is if you happen to indulge in any substance, say once a month, once every couple of months, we're not counting that in this for the sake of the argument of this video, okay? I'm talking about the day-to-day, -day, your day-to-day -day state of affairs, your day-to-day -day functioning in the world, okay? Can you function to your highest capacity and ability and performance just by being, just by your your life, just by, you know, all the pieces in your life. Can you do that? Now, I microdosed for two years. Before that, I was drinking coffee every day. Every single day I was drinking coffee. Then when I, when I started microdosing, I stopped the coffee because, uh, you know, for me, this was a superior uh, substance to take to enhance my physical and mental and cognitive and all the abilities you can think of. And it was a wonderful experiment. I loved every minute of it. Those were the two years I learned the most. It really set me on the path that I'm on right now. Uh, and it was, again, the time that I started microdosing that I actually started this channel. And I started posting regularly on this channel. I felt so inspired. And it's just a, an, an amazing experiment. 
now now that i no longer do that and i have a video very recent video so just go check my recent videos on on why i stopped microdosing and the potential disharmony that can occur from long-term exposure to microdosing psychedelics or really any substance for that matter here is something that i also noticed a pattern is by forcing myself to be in a certain state of consciousness which i am not yet organically spontaneously ready for i in a way went against the natural innate harmony of the way of the Tao. let me give you an example here when i uh, did the juice fasting and i started to get into just eating raw foods and fruits and i was like i was hardcore into it and this was actually started around about a year ago i got really hardcore into it at some point because at the time i was microdosing and sometimes uh i call it macro dosing or no man's land doses which is in between a micro dose and a macro dose so then i would list i would sort of contemplate on the matter of like why i should be eating raw foods and fruits and juices and like lighten up the diet and it would make because so, i'm in this higher state of consciousness it would make so much sense to me so much sense that I, I like i have no problem no cravings nothing i'm like all right straight let's just eat fruits let's just do juices and i did like a 21 day juice fast and it was just it was great you know but i was microdosing throughout the whole time and uh because it, it just you're in a higher state of consciousness it makes so much sense to you and then you're like of course like that's what i'm going to eat from now on that's what i'm going to do from now on I, of course i'm going to do a juice fast it's, it's easy and it was an easy juice fast you know because again i was microdosing i was in those states of consciousness and it was like you know you're already lighter and you're already more let's say enlightened lighter enlightened you're full of the light energy uh now what happened is this when I stopped the microdosing experiment and I began to go back into my, let's say, organic, spontaneous, normal, whatever that means, normal state of consciousness where I was in, in my journey right now, all the things I repressed, all the things, all the old cravings, everything else came back. So... Uh, you know, for the last, because I, I stopped the last three months, right? So for the last three months, all my old cravings, everything came back to me. You know, I've been eating bread, which I no longer, I am on. I've been eating bread. I talked in, in, in videos, in all the recent videos, how I've been sort of binging all over since I moved to Thailand. Uh, you know, I've been eating all kinds of foods, spices and salts and you know combinations biryani with like almonds and cashews and all kinds of spices and i've been you know going to all these vegan restaurants here in thailand and you know they're all over especially in pai and kopangan and really really like last three months or so I've just been like all the things that because now i'm in a sober uh, organic state of consciousness again and i had realized that I was forcing myself to be in a state of consciousness which I was not yet ready to experience. Causing an inevitable backlash. What goes up must come down. Because I forced it. It did not happen spontaneously and organically. I forced it through the ingestion of a very powerful substance. A very powerful mind altering substance and because I had done that uh, let me just adjust myself here and because I had done that because I had forced myself to be in a state of consciousness which I was not yet organically spontaneously ready for I experienced the inevitable backlash the inevitable phase in which you force something you take a rubber band you force it to go this way and it's just gonna bang it's the more you force it this way the more it's gonna go back that way 
and after this period of being just again just in a sober state in an organic state of consciousness um i got all these binges out of my system i tried everything i went to the all the vegan restaurants i've tried all the delicious foods and all the junk vegan junk food and all this stuff i tried it because i had totally skipped that phase okay i totally went from the level of i was eating just salmon and eggs like every day literally a year ago like right around the, it was a year ago that I got introduced into the idea of lighting up the diet and going to fruits and stuff. I literally, because I was always on psychedelics and I was like, because things just move so fast when you're on psychedelics. If, if you're microdosing, like I was doing five days on, two days off. So I was like always in that state and I was always increasing the dose to, to offset the tolerance in those five days. And then I would take two days break and restart the process. So I was always in those you know higher states of consciousness i literally skipped over from eating salmon and eggs every day to let's go straight into fruits and very quickly into juices and i had so i forced the process the process forced it, it, there was a skipping there was a lag there levels you know it was like skipping from level five in a game to level 10 when you haven't even beaten the bosses in level six seven and eight and that's what i've been doing in the last three months through just being in a sober organic spontaneous state of uh, mind state of consciousness I got to experience all these things in the levels. I went to all, I had all the junk, the, the bread, the, you know, the vegan brownies and the cook, vegan cookies and, the, you know, all that stuff. After I got through all of that, then I uh, had some old demons come back to me like sushi and bread especially, you know, because I, I grew up in the Middle East. We ate everything with bread, pastries, even cheese, you know. You know, cheese, like things like that. So I, uh, I've been just kind of uh, surrendering to these things and experiencing them. And in that experience, observe what is happening in my body, how the body is responding to these foods, how I am feeling from day to day. And through that, through the observation of the experiment, of the experience, like uh, for example, when I was in Vipassana, which again was in a, in a sober state, uh, we would eat these foods that they would prepare for us, cooked vegetables, but with spices and salts, and I would eat them. And because all I'm doing really is sitting down and just observing, I would feel exactly like how my body is responding to these foods. So over the period of the last three months, in an organic and spontaneous manner, through experiential observation, without having to force any state of consciousness, without having to force me to eat certain foods, because in those states where I was like always microdose always on psychedelics always in that state of consciousness it was so easy it was so obvious to me that the highest vibrational foods would be fruits and then juices and then breatharianism just became so obvious because when you take psychedelics you you are kind of in a breatharian state you know when you take psychedelics you don't really want to eat it shuts down your appetite but what is actually happening is increasing your state of consciousness that you don't even want to eat anymore so it was so easy for me to, I even wanted to be a break because I was forcing the process so much that I was like, I could be breatharian in like two months, you know, but now through the experiment and through what, you know, just going back to the sober state on a day to day uh, and through just going through the motions, going through the levels, experiencing the levels, going, eating, the, going to the vegan restaurants, eating the vegan foods, eating the cooked foods, uh, da, 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 eating the cheese, eating the bread all these old demons and cravings i now am in a totally convinced state it's totally it's out of pure conviction that if i'm still going to eat it's going to be a living foods foods that have the life force in them i am now organically and spontaneously at the level so now i let's say if i was in level five in the game i now over the period of the last three months have gone through level six, level seven, level eight, level nine, and now I'm organically, spontaneously at level 10, where I genuinely would like to take in things that are living, things that have the life force in them. You see? And there is no forcing the process here. It's uh, genuine, it's essentially 
in total acceptance of where I am in every moment. So over the last three months, I was in total acceptance of where I am. I never judged myself for anything. I'd go to a restaurant, I'd grab a big bowl of biryani with like so many spices and it's salty and it's like, it's really like I'd eat it and then, you know, I would just feel the burbs coming out with like, you know, and the nasty farts and it's because it's full of spices and salts and they would bring you like the lentil soup with it and bread and it's like, you know, the naan and stuff and it's like, you know, but I, I was in total acceptance, acceptance that here I am. This is the experience I want to have right now and I'm not ready to go beyond it at the moment. I'm not ready to just eat fruits. I'm not ready to just do juices, let alone become a breatharian, which at some point, you know, when I, when I found out about lighting up the diet, I, I really thought in like a few months, I'm going to be a breatharian. Of course, you're, if you're always in that psychedelic state, it, it makes sense to you. And you're like, of course, breatharian. Yeah, of course, you know, because you're already through this use of the substance, you're all, almost in a breatharian state, which is why doing the juice fast while I was microdosing was so easy. It was so unbelievably easy because I was practically with, with these substances, you're practically in a breatharian state already, you know? So... Over the last three months, I was in total acceptance of where I am in the journey at every moment. And through the act of ingesting a substance to, enha to enhance your state of consciousness in a certain way, you're essentially not in acceptance of where you are at that in that moment. This is why I say the statements, being sober kicks ass. Because being, it literally kicks your ass. Because it, it, it makes you accept where you are every moment in your life. Meaning, if I am tired right now, I am tired right now, and I'm not going to drink a cup of coffee to alter that. Because there is a backlash. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Taking this substance in, especially if it's a powerful and, and really like mind enhancing or, or, or body enhancing, it, it's, it, what, what, what gives energy takes energy. The more energy it gives, the more energy it takes. The more energy it takes away from you. So if I am currently tired, I accept that I'm tired and I'm just going to lay in my bed until it passes, until until the energy comes back up or I'm going to take a nap or I'm going to go, go to get, my, get to bed instead of drinking a cup of coffee because drinking a cup of coffee is an act of not accepting yourself. It's an act of not accepting yourself. As simple as that. This is why I say in my books it doesn't count if you're doing if you're doing a if you're taking a certain substance, a particular drug. Every now and then, with the intention of integrating into your day to day life. This is why I still take psychedelics. Every now and then, whenever I feel the call, I'll take them, fully with the intention. Like I'll have my notebook as I take them and write. Be like, okay. This is what I want to, what I'm going to start to do tomorrow. This is what I'm going to integrate into my life. This is what I'm going to do on a daily basis from now on, whatever I'm learning in the trip. You see? So because I am, I am understanding now that I do not want to force anything, that I would like everything to be spontaneous, that I would like everything to be uh, organic. Now I can hear some of you guys, again, the straight edge, uh, hardcore drug Nazi people. Oh no, but you're taking a drug and you're using whatever it's giving you to. So w you're talking about being spontaneous and organic, yet here you are, you're still taking a drug. Aren't you, aren't you forcing things? No, because uh, not in my books, in your books. Okay, in your books, but not in my books. In my books, if I am taking it with the intention of integrating into my day-to-day -day sober state of, of consciousness, then I'm actually a, a smart ass. I'm actually like, I'm, I'm being really smart here with my state of consciousness. In my books. In your books, it's different. Your books, my books, they're different books. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's not forcing it. It's just being honest with where you are every moment. Being honest of what your state of consciousness is right now, every moment. Just here, here I am. I'm tired. I'm not gonna take a cup of coffee. I'm not gonna take a cup of coffee because I'm accepting myself where I am right now. I'm tired. I wanna eat a bowl of biryani right now. I wanna eat meat. I wanna eat cheese. I got this old craving for chicken. I've been, uh, you know, I've been. Let's say I've been a vegan for four years, you know, and suddenly uh, I get a craving for chicken. Uh, all right, maybe I, maybe I will act on it, maybe I won't. It's up to you, right? 
it's up to you. But it's just being honest of where, where you are in the journey at every moment. And I got to be honest with myself where I am in the journey at every moment over the last three months ever since I moved. And it's paying off because now I'm at the point where I am basically just consuming raw foods. Coming from a, a very deep, genuine, convinced, happy, joyful place. I don't have to take any substance to, to show me this anymore. Anymore. And in a way, the phase of microdosing and, and those epiphanies that I would have, and I literally was convinced in three months I'm going to be a breatharian, just drinking water. You know? And, but that's all just foreshadowing for the future. So whatever I experienced in those enhanced states of consciousness, uh, which was prolonged because, you know, I, would, I microdosed for two years. I sort of know my future now. I know for sure that whatever time it takes, spontaneously, organically, I'm going to be a breatharian. That's a uh, master the breatharian state without a question. Because it just foreshadowed everything for me. Now I'm allowing the process to happen spontaneously and organically on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I just saw my future in, in, in that period of microdosing. I literally just saw my future. I, I just saw that, okay, clearly that's where I'm heading. It literally almost showed me my future in, I don't know, I'm not going to say any any state of time, uh, but because it's just going to happen organically, spontaneously. But I literally just saw my future. So now I just, I just look at my future. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's breatharian. That's, that's no problem at all. Uh, like I talk about it as if it's a thing that I mastered, even though I have not mastered it yet. But I'm allowing the game to uh, the light to purge itself on its own momentum, spontaneously and organically. And just being honest where I am at every moment of it, every moment where I am in the game. And it's beautiful like that because it's a total acceptance of yourself. So being sober on a day-to-day -day basis is a total acceptance of yourself. That's uh, actually what it is. So, um, you know, hopefully this video could, uh, you know, give you insights into your own where you are. Would I go back and not microdose for two years? Fuck no. Fuck no. No way. No way. No way. So despite knowing all of this, you might still feel the urge to microdose. And I say, by all means, go ahead. Because if the urge in you to do something is so strong, then your soul really wants to experience that. You see? Uh, and then you learn. You, you're going to learn whatever you learn from that experience. I, I have certainly experienced some very positive effects, long-term effects of microdosing. My brain got wired in some way or another. That is for the better. Whatever it is, however it got wired, I'm so glad for those two years of microdosing. I'm, I really am. I, I would not change a single thing in my past. Not a single thing. I'm in total acceptance of what is. I'm in, to, I'm in total acceptance. I would not change a thing. A thing. I would not change a thing. Not, not one thing. Yeah, so thank you to the patrons for your support, for your continued support. I really love you guys, and I uh, appreciate all, all the support, the continued support. Uh, you could join the Patreon family, $2 a month, down below in the description. PayPal donations, one time, are accepted and highly appreciated. Instagram, Saeed Mobayed, and until next time, may the force be with you.